Hello, my name is Judy Davidson. Welcome to our video series, Conversations About Grief. Today I'll be talking with you about the child's grief process. We live in a culture where children are often the forgotten grievers. There are several myths and misconceptions about children and loss that need to be dispelled. Myth one, children are too young to understand. Therefore, they will not be negatively affected when a loss occurs. My son Chris was two and a half when his father died. When he was 16 years old, he had a flashback of the day his father was killed. He remembered what he was doing, what I was doing, and what his brother was doing. He also remembered being very, very scared. Not all young children remember what happens, but children can be negatively affected by loss, especially if the death occurs in a traumatic way. Myth two, children are resilient, therefore they will bounce back. Resiliency means that a child is surviving adversity. When a death occurs, if a child does not experience the kind of assistance he needs, he may experience critical incident stress or post-traumatic stress. He may also act out inappropriately through violence, drug abuse, and risky sexual behavior, or experience school failure and school dropout. A child needs support when a loss occurs. Support can reduce the impact of adversity and the negative consequences for the child. Myth three, children are fragile and should be protected from death. Therefore, they should not be allowed to visit the dying or to attend wakes and funerals. A 10-year-old boy's father died suddenly. His wake was to be held on Halloween. The mother didn't want the boy to miss the fun of going trick-or-treating with his friends. The boy wanted to attend his father's wake. The mother insisted he go trick-or-treating. The child is still angry and rebellious toward his mother for not allowing him to attend his father's wake. And now he hates Halloween. Caitlin was four years old when her great-grandfather, Daddy Bob, was dying of cancer. She and her grandmother took care of him five days a week. Katie would sit on the bed with him, sing him songs, read him storybooks, count, tell him nursery rhymes, and say her ABCs. She would give him something to drink and rub lotion on his hands and arms. She was not in the room when he died. After her grandmother released her initial pain and calmed down, she came into Katie's room and took her gently in her arms. She told her that Daddy Bob's body had died and asked her if Katie wanted to say goodbye to him. When Caitlin entered the room, she climbed up on his bed, put her arms around his neck, kissed him, hugged him, and told him that she loved him. Caitlin also visited the funeral home before the funeral service. Her grandmother told her what she would see before they arrived. When they walked up to the casket, Katie asked where were his feet and legs. The funeral director took off the spray of flowers and opened the casket so that Caitlin could see that he was all there. She waved goodbye and blew him a kiss. She regularly visits the cemetery with her grandmother to take flowers. She's 10 years old now and has had no negative reactions from being with him before he died or from seeing him at the funeral home. Children must complete tasks of mourning in their grief process. Task one for a child is accepting the reality that the person is dead. Many times because children are excluded from closure activities, they have difficulty accepting this reality. Their ability to do so is also influenced by their cognitive and developmental level. Participating in the rituals that acknowledge the death and say goodbye is healthy for children. In preparing them for these experiences, use simple language and give answers to any questions that can be understood biologically. For example, Daddy's body is dead. Dead means that Daddy doesn't live anymore 
and Daddy's never coming back. Task two for a child is expressing feelings about the loss. Young children experience their grief and express it in short, intense episodes. All children need physical outlets and permission to have their feelings. Adult modeling of healthy grief is extremely important. If adults do not cry in front of a child, the covert message is it's not okay to cry. Crying, talking, writing, drawing are all healthy outlets for expressing emotional pain for adults as well as for children. Task three for a child is adjusting to life without the deceased. Children must adjust to life without the deceased as do adults. They may resent having to live without an activity they once enjoyed doing with the deceased. They may try to assume some of the responsibilities once fulfilled by the deceased. They struggle with changes in family rituals, as do adults. Include children in discussions about changes in family rituals so that they can have some control over their adjustment to an event which is out of their control. Task four for a child is reinvesting in life. Because children have to grow up before they can complete their grief process, they may have difficulty investing in living fully until they've completed their grief work. As children mature, they will ponder the meaning of life and death. If the loss occurred at a young age, they may be old souls as compared to their friends who've not yet experienced a loss. Children's responses are different from adults. Children do grieve. They do not grieve like adults. They grieve based on their cognitive and developmental level of understanding and upon their life experiences. Because children must grow up as they grieve, it may take them six to eight years to complete their grief work. The younger the child, the shorter the attention span for focusing on grief. Adults can concentrate on their grief for extended periods of time. As children mature, their ability to concentrate will also be extended. Children can regress when a traumatic loss occurs. Therefore, they need limits and expectations for their behavior. And discipline should be consistently enforced so that the child has structure and guidance for their lives. If a child is triggered and acts in a regressive manner, he needs nurturing, support, and reassurance. Unfortunately, most adults in the same family are involved in their own grief work and may overlook or be unaware of the child's needs. If the parent is depressed, the child may feel emotionally abandoned even though the parent is physically present. If something has happened to a parent, the child may be fearful that the other parent will die also. The cognitive and developmental levels of children will be described by age. These levels should not be rigidly interpreted. Rather, they're intended as a guide for caregivers to assist in identifying what a child may understand and what a child may need. Children can function at a more mature level if given appropriate support and accurate information about grief. These developmental levels should be viewed as steps on a stairway which lead to recovery. Typical reactions of children age zero to two. Experiences distress, feels abandoned, has difficulty sleeping, may cry more, may be clingy, has no cognitive understanding of death. Helpful responses by caregivers, nurture, rock, hold, talk softly in reassuring tones when the child is distressed, consistent care, maintain normal routine, 
typical reactions of children age two to four. Feels abandoned. Believes death is reversible. Difficult to manage. Sensitive to caregivers. May regress. May have upset stomach. May have loss of appetite. Show little affection or be very needy of attention. Helpful responses for caregivers. Consistent child care. Comfort, reassure, nurture. Repeatedly explain that death is permanent. Hold, rock. Allow the child to participate in closure activities. Give honest answers. Do not overindulge a child. Typical reactions of children age four to seven may fantasize, may have irrational thoughts about the death, sees death as reversible at the younger age, may have nightmares, may have difficulty sleeping, may ask unusual questions such as how will he eat or go to the bathroom, may be angry and act out. Helpful responses by caregivers. Repeatedly explain that death is permanent. Maintain normal routines. Answer morbid questions from a biological perspective. Discipline consistently. Include the child in closure activities. Talk freely about the deceased. Read books with the child about death. Encourage the child to draw and talk. Do not hide your grief. Do not overindulge a child. Typical reactions of children age seven to 11 may experience shock, denial, anxiety, sadness, anger. May try to wear a strong mask. Understands that death is final may be preoccupied with morbid questions, such as, do worms eat the body? Concerned about their peers' reactions, may feel different from others. Helpful responses by caregivers. Give honest answers to all questions. Encourage expression of feelings. Give the child choice about participating in closure activities. Encourage reading, drawing, writing, or talking about grief. Do not overindulge a child. Typical reactions of children age 11 to 18 may experience shock, numbness, denial, may experience depression, may experience regression, may become more aggressive, may have relationship difficulties, may have difficulty concentrating, may wear a mask to hide their grief, may act tough but feel vulnerable and lonely, understand death is final and will include them someday, may take unnecessary risks. Helpful responses by caregivers. Give honest answers to all questions. Include them in closure activities. Listen. Encourage support by peers. Encourage reading, drawing, writing, or talking about grief. Provide consistent guidelines for behavior. Do not overindulge a child. What are typical responses and behaviors of grieving children? It is normal for the child to experience emotional pain expressed through crying. It's normal to have difficulty concentrating in school. It's normal to be more apathetic about schoolwork, to have some memory loss, to have some problems with anger. The child may seem okay and be very distressed a short time later. The child may have difficulty sleeping and eating or be very reflective at times. 
The child may talk about the person over and over again. The child may have difficulty maintaining interest in extracurricular activities. The child may dwell on things he used to enjoy doing with the deceased. The child may become concerned about other members of the family or become fearful about their potential death. The child may be disruptive at times. These responses are healthy and indicate that the child is completing grief work. What represents an unhealthy response by children? If any of the following responses develop, professional grief counseling is recommended. A major drop in grades and student effort. Symptoms of depression. Chronic stress-related illnesses. Anger expressed as uncontrollable rage. Use of drugs to cope. Withdrawal and social isolation. Difficulty with anxiety. Suicidal thoughts. Attempts or threatens to run away. It's not unusual for a child to be triggered when someone else experiences a loss. For example, if a death occurs at school, the child may be triggered and need to re-grieve the old loss. The child may also experience triggers throughout the life cycle. For example, his graduation and mom isn't there to see him receive his diploma, or her wedding and dad isn't there to walk her down the aisle. Regardless of the age of the person, when that individual is triggered, please be a safe person yourself and allow them to grieve. How well a child survives the loss is directly related to how well the adult caregivers are managing their grief and their ability to support the child during the grief process. If you're unsure about what to do, contact a grief counselor for assistance.